Hey everybody, Barry here again. So since I posted the update or the plans for putting an LS in the Grand Caravan, I've got almost 50 new subscribers. And that is insane because that was Monday and this is like Wednesday at 12 o'clock. So in like 60 hours, I've got 50 new subscribers. It's, it's absolutely insane. I'm just a guy, I'm just one guy who's building stuff and filming it myself and having a bit of fun. And that's pretty exciting. I'm not doing this for like clout on YouTube, trying to get as many viewers as possible and stuff. I'm just <laughs> want to do cool stuff. So it's really exciting that other people want to see it. So with regards to that, going to continue on and get this engine ready for the van. I brought in one piston ring. Now I have no idea where I put it. Oh, here it is. So I brought in a ring and I'm going to break this one so I can clean it ring lands. This is just another old 5.3 or 6 liter or something piston ring. So I can break it. So just take the ring, find the middle. Oh my God, we can't even break this. Yeah. So I tried to break the ring and this LS stuff is actually nuts because like you cannot break this at all. Uh, I don't understand it. I'm gonna cut it up with a hacksaw. This is crazy. I've put rings on. 305s and bent them a little bit too far one way trying to put them on and broke the ring like wow so what i like to do and this is just one way of doing things lots of different ways is to take our ring take the sharp end put it down in the ring groove like this and just rotate it and usually any dirt that's in there is going to come out with very little effort. So I found a little bit of a better way to do it, and that's to hold the ring like this, put it in the groove and rotate it backwards. And watch what comes out of this. That is a lot of dirt and oil and grease and stuff. This countertop was pretty well cleaned before I started cleaning these. I'll give them another run over with brake cleaner before I put them together. Just to make sure there's nothing in there. But that's a lot. Clean your stuff. Got all the ring lines cleaned out. Here's our pile of nasty. So now I'll just go ahead and clean the pistons up a little bit, spray some of the junk out of them, and go ahead and gap the rings. I'm gonna gap all the rings to 35 thousandths because I'm sick and tired of frigging up ring lands. Whether that's due to detonation or ring gaps touching and popping the top off the piston, who knows? But it seems like every piston that I've broke so far has broken right where the ring gap is. So 35 thousandths it is. I've done 30 thousandths, I've done 28 thousandths, and I've still broken them. Right up around 14, 15 degrees timing. I'm not gonna be putting this into the van, like that much timing with 15 pounds of boost. I'm only probably gonna go eight pounds. But uh, I don't wanna break any more pistons. This is four sets now that I'm, that I'm after changing. I'm kinda tired of it, so let's gap them up. And what do you do when you don't have one of those fancy ring grinding tools? You improvise. Well, let's see if I can get it tightened down. There we go. Flat file, vice, just scrape the rings along it. You wouldn't believe how fast you can do it like that. And as long as you don't hold the ring kind of oblongy, you get a, a perfectly straight cut on your rings. So we got our ring put in the bore, and I'll just show you. So you just pop your ring down like this, grab a piston, keep it nice and square, push it down, inch, inch and a half, something like that. That makes sure that the piston is square, or the ring, sorry, is square. It's not tipped up or down because you'll get a different reading. Here's our 035 uh, Bogus. There we go, here's our 035. So I'll keep that one out because that's what we're gonna file it to. Now we'll check to see what this ring actually is so let's start at uh, no, 
26. It was way wider than 26 though. Let's go 30. Or even wider than 30 though. So the rings are actually pretty well worn in anyway. I don't even know if I'll have to file this one actually. It's actually sloppy at 35 thousandths. So this ring, we're not gonna have to touch. The second ring I'll check just to make sure, the second compression, and we don't actually have to touch the oil rings at all. They just stay as is. So I'll go ahead and get all these rings gapped and we'll assemble our pistons and rods and put those in. Just to show how wildly different these rings can be, look at it in number six, how tight that gap is. It's nowhere near 30,000 or 35,000. I went and checked a couple of different sizes and we have 18,000. That's the one that actually sits there and it's, and it's even a little bit loose. So ring in number one was 35,000, probably 36 ring number seven 18 thousandths this is why i always always gap the rings because that's way too tight for boost and that's the upper compression ring so i blew up the cadillac this year i had it was an untouched lq9 from o2 and i, I never touched it never opened it up nothing just bolted a turbo on it put decaps on it and blew it up at eight psi and like 11 degrees timing and i was so confused why that happened looking at this uh i can kind of understand why i just realized i misspoke this cylinder is number five this is number seven Just kind of a tip, We've got a lot of new subscribers going on here. Um, I have a Facebook group called Station Road Rat Rods YouTube. I also post a lot of updates on there. Just updates that I won't put in the videos, just, you know, stuff I'm at throughout the day. So if you want, check it out. It's auto uh, approval, so no trouble. Got all the rings gapped, got them put out one through eight. I put each piston in each bore with each rings. So this piston is gonna be number one. This is the rings that I gapped in cylinder number one over here. Right through number eight, all matches this cylinder. So, you know, these rings here that are number three, if I put those in number five or six, might be a different gap because maybe the cylinder bore is worn a little bit. So just to be sure, we're gonna put it all back in where it belongs. I'll get the rods cleaned up, the bearings cleaned up and put in. And I'm gonna go over ahead and assemble this now and pop those in. So we're ready to go for reassembly again. So we got our 
piston is ready to go onto the rod. So I checked the orientation before I took these apart. And this dimple on the rod is going to face opposite the dot on the piston. So if we put it sideways like this, ooh, drop it on the floor while I break it, it's going to go like this. So here's our dot over here, and here's our dimple. And all of our pistons and rods are going to be like that. Here are our bearings right here. I do have them numbered one through eight, but because I don't have the rods numbered, this is basically just to keep them as pairs. So we'll clean this up, make sure it's nice and clean. Don't want any dust or dirt, anything like that. That's gonna mess up our clearances. Make sure our bearings are nice and clean. And dot faces away. Now we'll take our pin. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it just to make it easier to put in. So after you get it in so far, leave some room to get the wrist pin in, or the wrist pin clip, sorry. Make sure you get it seated all the way in the groove because you don't want it to fly out and you'll never see it again. And there we have it, piston and rods assembled. Okay, well, seeing as I got all the rods and pistons assembled, and I got an hour or so left, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stab them in. So this engine is soon gonna be done. I think I'm gonna have to change the cam plan. The LS7 cam takes a real big spring. This was really aggressive and it takes a lot of seat pressure. The springs that match that cam are on back order at the moment, and I wanna get this thing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my LS1 cam in which will be perfectly fine, a little bit more lift. I think it's like uh, 500 lift, 495, something like that. So that'll be perfect for this anyway. The main plan here is to get the engine built. The second that I get built and fired, I'll bring the van up, 
pulling the engine out of it. So that's when we'll start at the actual fun work. Getting the engine out, getting fabrication done. See what kind of problems we're gonna run into. I haven't necessarily put this uh, style of engine in this style of vehicle before, but it's gonna be some fun. And I'm probably gonna be asking for a lot of help, <laughs> a lot of tips and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and put these pistons in. I'll get that cam changed out. When I do get springs, I'll change out the cam then. It's only a couple hours change out cam, nothing serious. Get the bread out away, front bumper, that kind of thing. And when I say couple hours, I mean three days. Because for sure I'm gonna break one bolt. It's gonna be a full day getting that out. Anyway, so let's get this finished up. Woo! We have a rotating assembly. Everything's all bolted in. Yeah, here we go. Pistons are all in. I don't think I have any in backwards. Nope, all good. So I think I'll just change out this cam, put the LS1 cam back in it. And I think that'll be pretty much it for tonight. I do have some more parts to paint. I got a port and paint the heads, paint the top cover, the front cover, rear cover I'm not gonna worry about because it's right on the transmission anyway, and paint up the oil pan. I'm gonna block off the pressure relief valve so we don't lose any oil pressure. Nice to have a little bit extra with turbo anyway. Uh, the Cadillac here, usually idle set like 40, 50 PSI, and wide open is like 80. So oil pressure has never been a problem in that one. So hopefully it's about the same with this one. So we're all finished up for tonight. Make sure to subscribe so you can keep up on all this nonsense and shenanigans. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night.